From in the beginning to the musical apocalypse, this is The Bible Says What. I'm your host, Mike Wiseman. Why are feelings so convincing to Christians? Countless Christians claim to have had an encounter with their deity, yet when hard-pressed, we find that they have turned feelings into encounters. Christians claim to know that they have experienced Yahweh or Jesus, but not physically. Their deity sends to them an unmistakable feeling. They have no real evidence or reasoning to believe this feeling is coming from their particular deity. They have nothing to go off of except their own unconvincing to others experiences. These unrealistic experiences are rooted in I don't know and I didn't expect to convince you with my unique unverifiable encounter with an invisible mute being. Too often, these minute and unconvincing encounters are turned into proselytizing tools. Christians tell me that they don't expect their encounter to be convincing, and then will turn around and use it to try and convince others that they've had an encounter with Jesus or Yahweh. Even when Christians are talking to other Christians, they will refer to these encounters as unmistakable encounters with the divine, yet these encounters always seem to boil down to nothing more than a feeling. To me, Feelings are not convincing enough to believe in the unbelievable. But that's just my opinion. Let's start the show. Is there anything in the Bible that you yourself have an issue with? <laughs> okay, so it took you reading the Bible to realize that those things were bad for you? Yeah, it actually did. I, I didn't figure this out on your own. No, Ted, Ted Bundy could be redeemed. God doesn't kill children. Does, what, what do you think the Passover was? Yahweh sets up a whole system in the Old Testament where you slaughter animals just so he's able to forgive you. Today's special guest is podcaster and author, Wendy Cunningham. Welcome to the show, Wendy. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for taking the time. Tell us a little bit about what you do. Gosh, I wear a whole lot of hats in my life, but I am a mom and a homeschool mom at that. I'm also hmm. an entrepreneur and I am an author and a podcaster. I think that's all I do. <laughs> and, a, and a homesteader <laughs> awesome that's a lot of work that that mom the parenting holy cow hats yep. off to you that's not fun that's not easy man not easy at all fun. that is fun, <laughs> <It's> fun. <laughs> that no, always keeps you on your toes that's for sure that is for sure man kids are fun um so this podcast of yours tell us a little bit about that I felt a calling to start a podcast, well, namely because I left social media kind of abruptly at the beginning of 2021 and felt like I had cut myself off from having a voice in the world. And so I listen or not listen. And so I thought there's so much happening in the world right now. How can we interpret some of these bigger things in more layman's terms, also through the lens of Christianity? So that's kind of the goal. My podcast and my blog and my brand is gaining my perspective. So it's always just through me kind of trying to figure out and make sense of it. So that's that's what I do. That's the the theme behind it. Gotcha, gotcha. Now I, I was reading on your uh, your page there that you are. From atheist to devout warrior for Christ. Is that correct? That is correct. That brings me a ton of questions. And that's where we're going to go next. <laughs> so from atheist to it. Christian, man, that's, a, that's quite a leap. How did that happen? Tell me about this. Sure. Yeah, it's a long, I mean, it was a long journey. It, mm. it, you know, saying it in one sentence makes it sound like one day I was this and the next day I was that, but really mm. it was a, a long journey. You know, I had, um, grown up my, my grandmother, my mother's mother was the matriarch of our family and one of my favorite humans. And she was an atheist hmm. and, you know, atheism is not something that you proclaim the way that you proclaim being a follower of Christ. It's like a non-proclamation, if you will, hmm. you know, she, we didn't talk about it very much. And 
yet when anything faith or God or Jesus was brought up, there was an eye roll and a, that's ridiculous, you know, (laughs) and that's about it. That was like the complete exposure I had to Jesus growing up. And, you know, my mom kind of followed suit. My grandmother had a very strong personality. And then I did because my mom never brought it up. My dad never brought it up. My grandma brought it up with an eye roll. So I'm like, all right. And then you go into public school. I was raised in Northern California, which, you know, it's very easy to miss Jesus there. And so I went to public school, was told about the big bang theory and evolution. And I'm like, sounds good. That's where we came from. That's how we got here. And wound up in my, yeah, in my twenties where I start, I started dating the man that's now my husband and he was a Christian and I didn't catch that. Hmm. on the first date. (laughs) I I don't know that it would have gone farther than that had I known that, but you know, God has such a a plan. And so through these conversations and my husband went about it, you know, evangelizing me, if you will, but I don't even know if he was being intentional about it at the time. He was just um, curious, kind of like you're saying, you know, finding out I was an atheist. He's like, I have so many questions, you know, and he started with that, just asking me, instead of telling me, he asked me, why do you believe that? Where does that come from? And I was very, by that point in my life, firm. Like I was defensive. And when I found out he was a Christian, I was like, Ooh, hard stop. You know, not, not, I don't like it. So (laughs) I was very antagonistic and he was very sweet and gentle and kind in, in our conversations. But I realized very quickly as I'm trying to articulate my beliefs that they're very, very shallow. And basically as in depth as I just explained to you, well, no one I respect believes that. And I was told another thing is true and there you are, that's it. So, you know, he then started to probe into a, could you have been created? And I'm like, well, gosh, I, I hadn't really thought of it, you know? And so then I went on this just, crazy journey of trying to unpack now that I'm an adult and I'm out of the eighth grade, what do I really think about the big bang theory? What do I really think about evolution? And as I went back to reevaluate those things, I thought these are just as ridiculous as believing in God. So it was the first part of this journey is really tearing down the things I thought I knew for sure. It wasn't an exchange. It was, okay, I can't believe that anymore. Okay, I can't believe that anymore. And then you get to a place where you're like, I, my life is a lie. Like it's an emotional journey. It's, it's very traumatic in a lot of ways. And at this point, my grandmother had already passed away Hmm. and I loved her so much. And so that is a massive, you know, confrontation in your, your psyche of like, what does this mean? If I think this is true now, what does that mean for her? And oh my goodness. And do I want to take any more steps? Do I even want to think about this anymore? So it was over many years, but ultimately the big pivot for me came when, and my husband married me when I was (laughs) still an atheist, although, which I know the Bible says, don't do that. And that's not my hope for my children. You know, I get it. However, he, if he were here, he would say that he knew I was seeking to know what was true. I I had already laid down the desire to be right. I wanted to know what was true. And Mm. he said, there is an absolute truth. And if she's seeking that, then she'll get there. And that's, that is true. I just, you know, I did get there in the end, but I, we got married and then I was pregnant a couple of years later. And I do believe that God gave us this very wonderful parallel in the natural to creation, being a physical creator of humans. And I'm growing this baby and I'm recognizing when the baby is away from me, separated from me, it will have the choice. And oh my gosh, like this is exactly what the relationship is with God. So that was a huge kind of pivot and click for me that this is what I'm doing. I'm, I'm just walking away from the God who just wants me to love him back. You know, like he loves me, like a parent loves you. And I, I just, that's it. That's the whole thing. So. Gotcha. That is the long-winded story. (laughs) Well, I've got tons of questions. Thank you for that. I appreciate the story. I myself have had kind of the opposite. Um, I grew up in the church. My family are pastors and I, 
youth group, all that fun stuff. I was in the yeah. church, man. I was, okay. you know, all over that. So, and then I started to question it and I started to read on and, and study for myself. And I found the emotional journey of from Christian to atheist. And that was, it was difficult to go through all of that because there was a lot of fear-based uh, indoctrination with my my uh my upbringing sure. so that was difficult to break free from the hell stories were difficult the the, mm -hmm. the the satan influential and demons all that fun stuff that's hard it was definitely hard to break yeah. free from it so it was an emotional emotional journey for myself as well um okay i, I unfortunately i didn't have anybody helping me out through it um that would have been nice mm -hmm. but uh, i had quite the opposite it was just it was just you need to find god god's looking for you and i never found him he never found me. I never had my mm. Paul to Saul or Saul to Paul moment. I had the Paul to Saul moment is what I had. Okay. So it was a little different for me. Um, sure. So I, yeah. That's where a lot of my questions are going to come from. Um, we'll put, put aside the, uh, the eye rolling grandma for a minute. I love that. that was really, <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> I, I had the opposite again. Everybody was eye rolling about anything that wasn't religious. You know, if oh, it wasn't so Jesus, every, everything, oh, yeah. right. Secular music and secular news, you know, all that stuff. Anyway. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> so a calling, uh, you left social media, uh, your husband was a Christian. God has yeah. a plan. Atheist beliefs are shallow. You wanted to know what's true. So what, did you have you said it was a long process mm -hmm. uh from from that atheist to christian what yeah. was it specifically i mean give me at least three good points that convinced you that this was the 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 truth you wanted to know what was true and you, you believe this to be true so can tell me what convinced you what those three sure. main points i mean just some of those yeah as i was evaluating you know one of my bigger stumbling blocks was this idea, this concept of eternity, you know, mm, that there yeah. that's, I think that's hard for anyone Christian or non-Christian to yeah. wrap your head around. Right. As a kid freaking out over it. All oh the yeah. Time. Oh, yeah. Totally. Just, yeah. And totally. that I didn't like like, okay, God just always was like, that's ridiculous. Like, what is that? You know? And that so I went, on this, like, <laughs> how, how, you know, I have to understand this. And as I was evaluating the big bang, you know, I came to kind of the same conundrum of, so either nothing created everything, which is scientifically not possible, right? Mm. Or something rock, gas always was and exploded and became. So there's my eternity again, is like, you know, what created the rock and the gas, you know, it, yeah. and I, I found myself in the same spot. And so I'm going, which is more ridiculous. And I, to be frank, they both are it's just to boil it down. They're both ridiculous that something always was that, you know, a God always was, or, or the rocks always were, or nothing created everything. I mean, these are all bad options. You know, I think you the option with the, with the, yes, totally. Uh, but I think the option with the rocks and the site, we don't know. I think it's, it's still, we just don't know where it came from, but and right. what, what, and to insert something in its place as a god yahweh specifically sure. um i i don't think that makes much sense much uh, blah, 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 makes much <laughs> sense either <laughs> but you Absolutely. know what i mean so yeah, i mean you've, you've I, I inserted an to... invisible magical guy now to explain sure. something you don't understand sure and i thought my faith right uh -huh. is it's more reasonable to me that an intelligent being created uh -huh all the things I see around me that make sense and are not chaotic, they're ordered, mm. then the opposite where mm. the, you know, we don't know, you're right, where mm. all this other stuff came from, but it, the, it demonstrates order. It doesn't demonstrate chaos to me. So, you know, I'm sure you've heard the example of, of a book being, you know, like you would never hold a book in your hands and go, oh, this just came to be the letters on the page and the colors and the pictures, you know, like 747 same thing with a tornado it's yeah, not exa yeah exactly put it back yes, together it, yeah but but we, we've seen how these things are we or created sorry <laughs> you almost got me there <laughs> <laughs> we see how these things happen you know we, we can see how things form how things are evolved throughout time we can mm -hmm. see that now yeah to, to get to that beginning part i don't know i'm sure i haven't really done the research maybe somebody out there has a great hypothesis i haven't seen it i don't know so i'm going to go with i don't know now sure. you've chosen a deity or a being sure. of, of of power that that has created everything now how did you get from a powerful deity being whatever it is machine right mm -hmm. you know farting unicorn universe farting unicorn uh to, to to yahweh specifically how did that happen 
Yeah, gosh. So that was kind of just a, a, a untethering. That was not a moment that pivoted me to Yahweh specifically. That was just a moment that boiled me down to my big bang theory that I put a lot of weight in is as ridiculous as a magical farting unicorn creating <laughs> everything, right? These are equally as ridiculous. And, uh-huh. you know, as I, you know, to go a little bit more specifically into this moment when I'm pregnant, I had this actual encounter and to you, you know, you're saying that you never found God. I felt like he never found me actual. Sure. Okay. There you go. Well, he's still searching. He's still searching. And my husband prompted me often and the Bible promises that, you know, if you seek, you will find, and it, does. it isn't a one time fits all, you know, like it is a, it is a, uh, what's the, uh, Oh my gosh, what is repetition? the word I want to use? A not repetition, yes, repetition, perseverance is the word I want to use. Like it is a journey of persevering towards this end. And I felt ridiculous not having ever prayed in my life, you know, praying and yeah. and you know, going into that space. And what is this? And I described it as it's like you're calling your grandma and you're not sure if they're gonna answer. You know, they care to like talk to you but like what are you even going to talk about you know it's like this like I know you're, <laughs> it was just like a funny feeling of like okay awkward but yeah. through that you know entering into that space and n- never hearing from God you know like yeah. I'm just praying and never really hearing I had this real tangible moment of encounter mm-hmm. in I was alone in my room folding laundry as a pregnant woman my husband was gone at work and and I had been stewing on this idea of, you know, I am now a creator. I see this parallel. I see how like, I'm not Hmm. doing this. This is not my, my body. uh, My body is doing it without my say. So I wish I could see in there and know that everything's going great or fine, you know? And I did have this sensation in this moment that God came physically into the room and revealed himself. Like I had, and I, I share this testimony, but to your point, that is just for my conviction huh. it my con- cutting out a little bit there missing all the good parts hold on uh, that <laughs> moment is i like to shut doesn't make god no are you there oh sorry oh man you just went like oh, that was really fun let's try it again from <laughs> <laughs> from conviction to that's where you're at it was it was your conviction yeah it was my conviction you're frozen but doing it again I'm sorry. It's like super windy here. It's probably my fault. I bet it's me. Well, I don't know why I'm having bad internet. Maybe it's a little bit of both. Okay. So it was your conviction. It was my conviction. And although I share that part of my testimony, I fully understand that that no more convinces anybody else that God is real. That was why did it convince you though? Because I was convinced in that moment. I mean, (laughs) just like if, if, let's use just an, if a farting unicorn walked in the room and you <laughs> it. saw it and felt it and knew, like you knew, like you knew, like no one's going to tell yeah. me from this moment on, there's no farting unicorn. I saw right. it, but I felt it. I know it's real. It's that right. But like, you could go, you could go try to convince everybody else. Hmm. There is a farting unicorn. And I mean, you might be able to convince somebody else based on your conviction of that being real, but that was for you that huh. farting unicorn exposed themselves to you and now you can't go back. So that was the moment for me of, I, I, it was as real as any other human ever walking in my room. Uh-huh. And I, I, you couldn't tell me that wasn't real now. And that was just the first time I've had many moments oh. and encounters since then uh-huh. of that nature where I, I know I'm experiencing God. I know I'm hearing his voice. I know that, but that came that, like I said, that no more convinces you God's real than well, anybody yeah, else. I mean, <laughs> clearly, but, right. but, but I'm still curious how it convinced you. Did you see him? No, I did not see him. No, I no felt physical. Him. You felt, felt it's all a feeling. How did yeah, you know it was absolutely. him? I did. I did. <laughs> <It's so> weird. <laughs> I know. I know it's weird. It, it just, it doesn't add up to me. It's just, okay. So you didn't sure. see him. You no. don't you, you like, okay. So did he, he talk to you? Said so you hear a voice. Was it a physical I feel, voice? I, yes, I have heard his physical voice. Not in that moment, but I have heard his physical voice since that. <laughs> so what's it sound like? 
I mean, next question, obviously. <laughs> is, it, is it high pitch? Is it, or is it, you know? No, it just sounds like a regular voice. I don't know what that means. I, and I get, no, I know, I know. And this is the element of faith that is hard to convey. And it's not, it's not arguable because I will never convince you it's real and yeah. you'll never convince me it's not real, right? I'm not trying to but convince you it's not real. I just, I'm just, oh, it's I just know. very confusing to me. You know, I've never had an experience where I felt Spider-Man in the room. Right. And I knew it was Spider-Man. I didn't see right. him. I but didn't if hear you him. Did. He didn't say it was him. He didn't leave a note. Nothing. But if but if you did, you would know. <laughs> is there? I mean, that's the deal. Wendy, it's so weird. That's but the is deal. there anything else? I totally else get that... it. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate you totally getting I my get it. confusion. But is there anything else in your life that this kind of thing works for? Like when your husband, do you have that relationship with your husband? You know, he's not there. You can't see him. You can't really hear him at that time, but you know it's him in the room. Obviously not, because okay. he's a physical man on earth. That's okay. a different experience. So right? why doesn't Yahweh show up as a physical man? He does in the person of Jesus. Okay. So I'm glad so you've you seen asked. Jesus. So I know we, you can't argue. And I used to think that you could say Jesus never walked the earth. That's I used I to think you could say, say that. You but. could say that, but you would be very, <laughs> very easily proven wrong. You don't have to believe Jesus is the son of God, but you do have to believe Jesus walked on earth because he's very historically proven, not just in the Bible, but in lots of supporting documents. So a great, uh, uh, a great book and, and documentary that I watched or that I often suggest to people is A Case for Christ. Lee Strobel, are you familiar? Yeah. Are you familiar with the case against the case for Christ? No, I'm not. There is a Brilliant. book I'm that sure countered there it. Is. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, there it's, is. it's, it's, uh, it's interesting book. Now I'm not a mythicist. Yeah. I I'm just going to go with, I don't know. I haven't done the research yeah, enough. I haven't totally. dived into it, but I can tell you right now, people don't come back from the dead. People also mm -hmm. don't heal ears, you know, that have been cut off. They also don't, um, bring people you know bring people like, like other kids and and whatnot lazarus um so, so that doesn't really happen healing. so that's where i'm at with that i huh? have experienced physical healing my husband has experienced physical healing so again did I jesus come down and tell you that. that it was him that was healing me did jesus come down In and tell moment? you it was him healing you yeah uh no jesus oh. did well how do you know it was him then me. i know like i know man that's how that faith just... works <laughs> I Maybe. know that doesn't add up for anything else, though. Why is it? This I know only, you're this right. One it's thing. actually special. So, so this is another thing, too, as I dove into the Bible and added that to the um, the puzzle was mm. looking through prophecy, right? Mm. Like the prophetic element of all of these people throughout hundreds of years of history prophesying specific details. And when you look at that, there's not any other religion that has that element of prophecy from oh. multiple different people well, over the course of hundreds of years speaking to this one individual that's going to come and he's going to do these specific things. And I even went into, well, how many of these things could Jesus himself manifest if he were trying to position himself as the Christ, right? There are very few that you could actually manifest. Could you ride in on a donkey? Absolutely. Like there are certain. You wrote in a donkey and a do. colt at the same time. That was that's what was written. So that's why Matthew, I think it was Matthew, put him riding on a both a colt and a donkey because it was written somewhere. So did it, the people who were writing the New Testament have access to the Old Testament? There were, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. So if I wanted to create a so, story, if I wanted to create a story, mm -hmm. I'm gonna about a character, a specific character. Let's, let's say Spider Man. Mm -hmm. I'm going to look mm -hmm. at his history and his roots. So I'm going to base it off of his already established history, right? Yeah. So, mm -hmm. and I, I'm going to, and if I want him to be like a, a, a hero of some sort and prophesy, right. well, I'm going to go back and try and fit him into different things that are said. They could be about somebody completely different, but I'm going to fit him in there and make it sound great. Sure. That's exactly what right. happened. That's exactly what happened. When you go through the <laughs> Old Testament, this, this savior wasn't supposed to die. Mm -hmm. Now we can we can dive into that later. I, I had oh, really, absolutely. It's been a long time since absolutely. I've dived you gotta into it, go but. back and revisit that Bible, sir. Isaiah. It's an Isaiah. And it does not that. But it doesn't anywhere say Jesus. Not once. 
Not once. No, so that's you're another right. thing. It does not say that would be Jesus. a great one. If it's, Jesus right. is going to come and blah, 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 you know, that would be cool, but you know? it doesn't. So we just, to me, it sounds like right. they just had that access and they made up these stories. So we, we well, can go look to that there. point. It would have to be, it is a mathematical impossibility that all of these things are coming together in one person. It is like, you know, know there's a, uh, in, in the book. Um, oh my gosh, I cannot think of what the book is called. I cannot think of what the book is called. I quote it okay. in my own book that I wrote, <laughs> but it is, it talks about the mathematical, like the numbers of how many, if, if six of these prophecies were fulfilled in one person, what would be the mathematical probability of that? If 40 of them were fulfilled, what would be the medical prob, you know, probability of that happening? If there's over 300 prophecies that are fulfilled. I mean, this I is- I think it's all made up though. I think these prophecies crazy. are of all course, made up. Yeah. I'm sure. I think they just put them together and we're talking connected about the dots. a conspiracy that I cannot. I mean, our date on the calendar is based off this man being on earth, right? So we're talking about a couple of guys that pulled off the greatest conspiracy theory on in all mankind. I wouldn't say conspiracy, I would just say it's religion and they make well, up that stories. would be a just conspiracy. like our, our Wednesdays made is, up after Odin and Thor, you know, we got our weekdays after other gods. That doesn't make them real. Well, sure. Our, it would be a conspiracy for a bunch of people to come together and collectively deceive. That's like I guess. a conspiracy. I, I, we can so call like, the Bible a conspiracy then. I love it. We're Let's talking go. about a pretty <laughs> epic conspiracy being pulled off on yeah, the time. entirety of mankind. I mean, yeah. hey, and that's again, there is so much reason to not believe. Like I'm, I spent the great majority of my life not wanting to have any accountability, not wanting oh, not to, it. Oh, that's not, that's it. a big piece of it. That I don't care. Totally a big I, piece I, you know, it. you know, okay. Accountability. That might Let's not go. be for you, but that is a reason why people don't believe. Accountability they don't for what? Want, I mean, I still have accountability for your actions for life on earth, that there would be such as right and wrong morality that okay. that you would stand before a judge and have to answer for the things you did in this life it's and called the, the law the common... and I, I definitely have that happen in real life 100 percent. yeah no i i'm accountable for my actions it's 100 if i go right if i go speeding down the freeway i'm gonna get in trouble right Right. If I steal Th something from a store, anime, uh, those are my consequences for my actions. I'm accountable for that, right? So yeah, it's not that I don't totally. want to be accountable. That's ridiculous, of course. Well, make me accountable. It would be. It's very different to be to have the idea that you would be accountable to an eternal judge. Oh, see now you got to add an eternal judge. That's weird. Through. That's, that's weird. That's the reality. That is the reality of the accountability we're talking about right now. We're not talking about. But what is this eternal to judge going to judge me on? Is it speeding tickets? No, it's not speeding tickets. Okay. So it what is, is it? Sin. Sin. It okay. is sin. The what is sin? Morality. What is according sin? to sin is the breaking of the laws of God. The laws of, of God. the Creator God. The things that God creator, doesn't like, right? If there is a creator and he says, these, this is the, these are the rules of the game uh -huh. and you break the rules, uh -huh. that's sin. I mean, and this is easy to go, well, I don't want to play the game. Okay, that's fine. But if there is a creator, there's a game and you're playing whether you want to or not. That's the accountability I'm talking about. It's, of course, there is a desire to be like, well, I don't want to play that game. I yeah, like I, to play this game or I, I don't want to participate in that game what exactly sin is to God? Because I've read the Bible. You said you've dived into it. Mm -hmm. So I, I assume you've, you've mm -hmm. read at least most of it. That yep. in that Bible, it talks a lot about sin. So mm -hmm. to me, the things that Yahweh finds sinful, a lot mm -hmm. of the things I find ridiculous, such as homosexuality. Sure. He thinks homosexuality sure. is a sin. I think that's ridiculous. Yeah. How okay. do you feel about that? Uh, I think it's a sin. Why, why do you think that? Because I believe in God. <laughs> because and God says it's a sin. I but what do you think personally? I, sorry, my roosters yeah. are just going off right outside here. My kids are going uh, off, so it's okay. I think I love, I have a, a lot of gay friends and I love my gay friends, but I also walk hmm. in sin myself every day. So it's, when I say it's a sin, I don't mean it's like, that is a dirty 
thing. I mean, it's a, it's breaking of the rule of the creator God. I'm not the creator God. So it doesn't really matter what I think about it. But do you think yeah, it's, it's a good right thing? My window. Hold That's on. A... There we go. <laughs> it's not morning time. Roosters are confused. That does not matter. That is a, that is a lie. That is roosters it? only crow oh my goodness. I in didn't the morning. <laughs> so how do you remember the, the, the rules? Uh, dang it. What questions did I just ask you? You uh, asked what I think about it. And I don't, yeah. I mean, I, that's, I don't have any thought about it. Oh, the gay friends. Yeah, that's where we're at. Oh, so do you think the gay friends of yours are going to hell? This is, it's, I did this to my husband over and over and over again. I hope not. It's not for me to decide, nor do I get a vote. But do you think so, your God has decided? I don't think that my God has decided as in it's past tense. I think that this is, that is, there's a lot of life, hopefully for each one of us between now mm -hmm. and when we'll have to make that, you know, stand before God. But I, I am speaking to you with three family members on the other side of eternity who, to my knowledge, were not believers in God, but I don't know where they're at. I can't say because I think they didn't believe they're for sure. And I can't make that call because I don't know their heart position. I don't have any idea what communication they had with the creator on the other side or, or during their passing or any of that. So I can't say. Interesting. Nor do I care to. I mean, that's the beauty of this is like, I'm not the, I'm not the creator of earth. So it's not my game. They're not my rules. So, which is why I can stand in a place of, I love you. I don't, I don't have any issue. And to answer your question, you asked before, what is sin? Sin is hmm. separation from God, separation from God. So if you're, if and the God wages of sin is death. Rules, so if we're separated absolutely. from God, we, yeah. we deserve death. Why can't we just it's, be separated from God? Why does he, ha why does he want us to is, die? That is what death is. Death is separation from God. I'm separated that from is, God right now. That's the answer. I'm living on a planet sure. that is and ruled by Satan. Satan has dominion over this. That I will agree with you. Your loving God has given the bad guy keys to the city and says, have you fun. Know, I'll be there eventually really... to judge everybody. Can I ask you, why do you believe in Satan? I don't. I don't believe in Satan either. But according okay. to your Bible, so you just said Satan, Satan right. is the ruler of earth. Correct. Right. That's what the Bible says. The Bible mm -hmm. says that Satan is the ruler and Yahweh has given him the keys to the city and released yeah, him upon absolutely. us. And that eventually he'll judge us. Right. Right. So yeah. the wages of sin is death. This is a rule that Yahweh mm -hmm. came up with. This is his idea. If we go mm -hmm. to, let's see, sorry, I lost it here. It was here somewhere, sinful sin, Yahweh punishes sin. Oh my goodness, this is embarrassing. <laughs> I didn't have my Bible verses in order here. Dang it. Oh, there it is. Sorry, it's Romans 5, 20, verse 20. It says the law was brought in so that the trespass might increase. But where sin is increased, grace is increased all the more, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. he did it to increase mm -hmm. sin. Does that sound okay. like a good idea? This is where you get into the danger of cherry picking verses out of the Bible. And saying, how am I cherry picking that? God. Well, what you're saying is here's one verse and let mm -hmm. me, that's the character of God. We that can, is one well, verse in a story dude, about the character of God. You want to go if in the character of God. Pulled we can go out, later. If For somebody sure. wanted to pull out even my own child, my mom is did this or mm -hmm. said this. That is one thing I said in the course of my entire role as your parent. Mm -hmm. Now, if that's how you want to pull it out and frame me as a parent, like, okay, that would be in a, that would be in an incorrect framing of my entire journey of parenting. Absolutely. But you could unfair. do that. You totally unfair. Do that. So I feel like that's an unfair thing to do. But well, let me, let point, me, grace increases. Yeah. Grace, grace increases. increases. Great. But sin also It increases. also says, it also says, well, sin, the, one sin. Uh -huh. Causes you're separated. death. So yeah, you're done. It doesn't matter. Would you do that to your kids? Sin comes after that. Do I need to allow? Have you ever heard like sometimes you just have to do the thing to learn the lesson the hard way? Like sometimes you have to touch the stove. Sometimes you have to let the bad I guy. I can tell you. 
I could tell my kid, I have one of these children, by the way. We all don't do. Touch the stove. <laughs> don't touch the stove. Don't touch the stove. Don't touch the stove. He's the kid that the only way he's actually going to learn that lesson is to touch the stove, right? That is to disobey me, to step out of a lot. And, and I was giving you the boundary, not because I'm a mean mom that doesn't want you to experience being burned. I'm trying to give you boundaries for your benefit. Mm. And if you need to touch the stove to realize there's a consequence there, then that's a better lesson than I could ever teach you by you not knowing. So I think sin is instructive. I know it certainly has been in my life. Sin has been a tremendous teacher for me, how to be a woman in the world, in the broken world, how to be a mom, how to teach my kids boundaries and what boundaries I wish I would have been given or wish I would have adhered to in mm. my, in my life. Don't and I can see stuff. now, I can see now the world says these things are all fine to do. And there is, there's damage that was done to me doing the things that the world says are fine to do that. God says, maybe don't do that. Maybe don't do that. And if I would have stayed in those boundaries, I wouldn't have had, I wouldn't have sustained some of the trauma that I sustained and carried. So I recognize that sin is an instructor and one sin, which we all will do at least one sin is enough to separate you. So the collection of sin after that is not like a collection of sin to then be judged on, like, look at all these sins. Cause we're all going to do it every day. We're all going to sin every day. So the let me get, let me, the let me sin is there to instruct you. It's discipline. Let me dive into that a little sure. bit. Yeah, that's the stove okay. thing. Let's go into the stove thing. I hear it honestly sure. constantly. Yep. So sure. what what if you told your kids touch the stove and die? If you touch that touch, stove, you will not yeah. only burn yourself, but I will separate myself from you. And that means death. One sin, mm -hmm. one disobedient. Do you think that's fair? Right. I do if you would do that to your I own say, kids. I do if yeah. there is a way that I can reconcile it on the other side. Yeah, if you make that choice, you threaten your that kids is with death. Your separation. When's the last if time you I'm threatened your kids with death? On the other side. Oh, don't even go there because let me tell you, probably earlier. <laughs> well, seriously though, <laughs> when is the last time you threatened your kids with death? Never. You're trying to. I hope apply. you would never do that. Let me give you another example. Let me take you down another parallel. There's someone in my life who doesn't believe in God because God is a man and she is very caught up in her identity as a woman and he sent his son and therefore blah, blah, blah. I'm like, whoa, sister, what you're doing is you're putting your <laughs> cultural human experience on an eternal God. And that's exactly what you're doing right now is you're, you're saying, let mm -hmm. me put an eternal relationship, an eternal perspective on a time and space human perspective logic it, logic it human doesn't logic. go that way human, human logic, logic is dictate is human that logic good parents do not threaten their kids with death is human logic this superior like has anyone ever logic wrong is no, that I like i don't know what that has to do with logic? the situation per, that we're presenting you're here. making but of course people have logic premise. wrong of course of course right so that's to say human logic is not flawless flawed, 100%. human logic yeah, so no. right now in my opinion you're making this a particular flawed one. argument okay you're making a flawed argument based on trying okay. to connect a parallel that is not the same that's Where's like the saying flaw? apples and apples and oranges and oranges Where's you're the flaw, saying Wendy? my human my human relationships are the same as my relationship with my eternal creator that well, I don't is know not that, the but, same yeah no i don't know that about is that. Apples i'm and just oranges. trying to trying to logically deduce sure. that threatening your children with death after one right. sin is illogical with flawed with flawed human logic you're doing okay, that so we agree it's that human logic is flawed human <laughs> logic is flawed i just really want to know where we're at here because are you you're not threatening your kids with death if they sin once right no, hon. I'm no, not okay. threatening okay, my good. kids. I'm just, I'm just, I'm, uh, we're going all in these different directions. I just want to I'm make sure. also not the creator <laughs> of the universe. That doesn't make it right, though, Wendy. Oh, man. So, of course. Of course. There is risk. You get in, you get in the car to drive and you can crash and kill yourself. It doesn't mean that every time you get behind the wheel, you're threatening yourself with death. It's like there no. are, are consequences to action. And that just happens to be if you choose. If sin over obedience if you choose this is the, whoa we've just narrowed on onto it yeah there's his will. choice if i said 
if I said, and I'm glad he gave me the choice because ultimately he's going to give me what I want. And if separation from him is what I want, he's going to give it to me. He's going to give it to me. So if I choose that, he's going to, his heart is that none should perish. That's where he's coming from. That's where he's at. I hope everybody chooses to reconcile back to me. I hope everybody chooses to reconcile back to me. And he's done the work to make that choice. All we have to, our choice is easy. We just have to receive the gift of grace. He's done all the work to make that reconciled. But if we choose, if, what do you mean? Well, it doesn't make any sense. These are his rules, his, his, his desires. He, he chooses absolutely he desires for forgiveness that we, he is the he one desires that chooses death absolutely. for separation he desires that we should have free will that doesn't mean that consequences are not going to be high of that choice Man. of that of that setup of that situation i i mean that's the deal i it is hard this there's no question that this isn't a hard a it doesn't hard make sense when navigate. you navigate it, it doesn't make it sense, makes Wendy. One thousand percent sense to me. As a, a I, that's a, that's scaring me a little bit. So as a loving you know parent, Wendy, I, you're being a little bit disrespectful. I feel like I'm not being disrespectful to you. No, I'm, I'm but now honestly I'm not my intention. You. I'm just yes, one hundred percent. You're telling me it's okay for this. You're intel. You're telling me it's okay for this this being to threaten people with death for not listening. You're telling me that's okay. You're boiling down. <laughs> a very complex thing into a simple sentence. Have you read and the Bible? You know what? Yes, I have read every word okay. of the Bible. So is there any part in there that you have a problem with? Anything in there at all? I will say that there are challenging parts of the Bible. Absolutely. Okay. Like what part specifically? Is there anything you can remember off the top of your I, head? I don't, di- I don't disagree with you that this is a challenging thing right. to walk through. But the, the way that you're looking at it is, this is a, a harsh thing. And I look at it from the other side going, I cannot believe the grace that you've offered me. Why do I feel that I am deserving of, I mean, who cares? Like, let's just go down to, if, if you don't believe in any of this, who cares? If you think God's just a bad guy, then like, why are you even talking about it? Like, who cares? Like, if you don't believe like, in him, like I why do. is I it? Care. I want to know. But, but if you don't believe in it, then uh-huh. just like, who cares? I can't. Why are you? Why are you so adamant about, I need to make sure that you agree with me? No, I don't want you to agree with me. I want you to make sense. And it's not making sense. It's just not you adding know what? up. I, I am just, again, I, it makes absolute perfect right. sense. Please in my explain head. to me where, where it works, how it works, no, how that you, works for you. Cause it does, it's still not adding up. You haven't explained it well enough, I guess. Just like Yahweh, he hasn't shown up enough. Yet, Here's I the guess. deal. I believe in a creator God. You don't believe in a creator Uh God. So nothing that I say from that foundation is going to make sense to you. I just don't see a good reason to believe it. That's the deal. Well, that's fine. That's your choice. That is the blessing of our creator is he's going to let you choose that. And he's going to let you walk that out. He's also going to throw me in hell. That's good. Hey, I don't know. I can't say. You should work that out with him if you're worried I tried. about that. He doesn't seem but to answer me. If then there is no hell, then if you know, like then there is no hell. If that's where you're standing, then you don't believe in hell. Okay, so, no, I don't. But but you then, think then I'm going to go to hell because of your? I don't think you're going to go to hell. I have well, no idea. I have no idea. I'm telling you right now, I blasphemy the Holy Spirit. I okay, not a believer at all. Yeah, definitely on my way to there. Well, you seem great and excited about it so like good for you like good cool then you're free from from the burden of god you know i don't know what to tell you like this is where it's this is where we're just gonna never agree it's like i don't want to agree i just want to understand well you're not going to understand because you you're not we're not coming from this cutting out sorry foundation does that make sense like If I believe there's a God that created everything and you don't believe there's a God that created everything, then where are we going to intersect where it makes sense to you? I I can't in my mind, like I've stood where you're standing and I've walked through these things so that it makes perfect sense to me. And I'm continued to be just in awe at the grace and mercy of God and the way that he has worked in my life, in my relationship, in my physical body. Like, and I, again, I understand that that would be hard for you to, to walk through just like if I went through cancer and I was explaining to you what it's like to, to 
go through chemo, you'd be, right, you'd be yeah, like, okay, yeah. that, that's totally your wouldn't experience. understand cancer. I can't really understand. But that. I can relate to your Christian the same. side. I can relate to that because I was there. You can relate to the head knowledge, but you can't relate. To, like you can say, I know mm -hmm. what cancer is. I've studied cancer. You can say that, but you can't. No, I once had cancer. I once had Christianity. I once had that that belief system. I was okay. there. I had it. But you I, obviously I thought I never talked to Jesus had. all the time. I thought he no, was no, in no. the car with me on the way to school. I thought he lived in my you heart. Never had, you never had the, the experience I'm explaining because you say what I'm explaining. No, I never he felt an invisible man send me feelings. I've all just, right. I've never. There you go. Yeah. I have. And so you've that's had like an saying, invisible man. I've never you. had a tumor invisible to my eyes growing in my body. <clears throat> yeah, I bet you haven't. Like no. you haven't had cancer. I don't know. Somebody has had an invisible tumor that they can't see with their eyes or an invisible disease that you can't see with your eyes. It doesn't make it any less real. It's happening. It doesn't make it any more real. And you, uh, well, that I would disagree with. If, if you, you have somebody a disease has... that's running through your body. Yeah. I, that you would can, be evidence somebody, at that somebody point. Somebody can say that wouldn't be just yeah. a random faith belief. That would be evidence, and I haven't seen any yeah. evidence. And you, well, as you've uh -huh. admitted, still haven't seen any evidence either. All you've oh, had I, is a feeling, and you've heard no, no, a no. voice. That is my con personal feelings and convictions, just like you would have symptoms of the disease, right? That so what you is the would symptoms only of Christianity? personally experience, but the evidence that I have seen is, and to your point, you've not gotten to a place where you can articulate what did create us. You just go, I don't know. Okay. Right. Well, I feel like right. I was I able that's... to get to a place where I say it makes more sense. The evidence around me that I see with my eyes, the evidence I experienced growing a physical body in my body that doesn't make sense. Like, I'm just like, that was such a miraculous experience is that there is order, there is design there. It's not just chaotic and random, there's design. Even to the fact that like, if your eyeballs are not exactly on the same plane, you can't see it all. That's not chaotic, that is design. Do you think it's a good design? That I can see the world around me? The because world. my the, eyes are on a perfect plane. Everything. Do you think it's Absolutely. a good design? Oh my gosh. Do you, do you think I it's a good design to have a I playground see... next to a sewer system? Do you think it's a good design that I can choke on things on um, food? My windpipe so, and my, my food pipe are the same one. Do you right. think that's a good thing that my eye has to reflect itself backwards and upside down and it has to create this thing just to flip it over? Hey, why? if it works, then what? if it works, I mean, that's like- the It doesn't really work that well. I choke of, and die on things. How many times Cancer have you choked riddles your body. and died on things? These don't seem like perfect things times? to me. That, this is, this no, is no, a no, crappy no. design. There is not perfection here. There is- not crappy design here you know what there's a really brilliant model of car that did adam and runs eve runs really eat well out of but it horse? dies <laughs> it <laughs> comes to an end a car wears out did I mean, adam and eve eat out of different holes did adam and eve eat out of different holes what does that mean what do you mean you're saying it's not perfection now it was perfection in the garden when he created adam and eve so they must right. have been eating out of different holes than the one they no, breathed they were from not we well, are this, still, again, still you're operating design. you're operating from the premise that this I, is all there is i'm not operating from that premise i know that has this nothing to not do with the question is. though wendy i think that there is miraculous design all around me does it make it perfect no i think it is miraculous do you think does it always are like i have a i have a peacock on my property and in all like evolutionary senses, why on earth? Like it makes no sense for him to have a tail that it does. prevents He's... him from flying well. He from is eating. way more susceptible to, pr to prey though. Like he is a absolute target to prey. He can't escape as well as his counterpart. Evolution says survival of the fittest. He should have been plucked out at some point. But I look at him and I'm like, that is miraculous. Like you are stunning. That is miraculous, right? So all like, of creation I just think is that's miraculous. So crazy. All I think, creation is I miraculous. I believe all creation is miraculous. I also respect the fact that you can have a different opinion of that. Well, why it doesn't do you think mean that I'm wrong miraculous. and you're right. Why do you think Satan think is miraculous? That, I why do you think, think cancer? that this is not all there is. I think this uh, is that, not all there the is. Beside the point, you said and it's I miraculous. I want to know why you think those things are miraculous. Creation I understand is you don't miraculous. Think this is... Okay. <laughs> creation is miraculous that doesn't mean that there is not flaws that doesn't mean that there's not going to be things that are going to take us to the next life which is perfect
What about things that make us suffer? Eternity is perfect. I believe suffer, there's purpose in suffering. What about children absolutely... being raped in church? You think there's purpose for that? I No, I think that that's terrible and tragic, but yes, I think there's purpose. And I think that this is, these are symptoms of a fallen world that makes us recognize there is evil. And if there is evil, there is good. There is no purpose the, for a child being molested in church. I'm gonna let you know that right now. No purpose. It's disgusting. And the fact that disgusting. your God allows it to happen in his home is more evidence that he's not. This real. is not his home. This is not his home. Our church is his home. home. Does he come down to churches and and dwell amongst his 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 congregation? Yeah. It's yes. like you can so come he's there visit. in church, his home, and he doesn't stop it. That's another Do reason you go he visit can't be somewhere real. And does that then become your home? If he's a loving God and he can do everything, no, and anything, if you and he go sees visit everything, somewhere, does that make it your home? If I see a child oh, being raped yeah. in that home, Wendy, I have, I, will stop I, it. I have, that's absolutely, what makes me better than you your should. God. <laughs> oh, yeah. sir, gosh, I mean, 100%. I feel like I think we're just done with this conversation. Was it, was it the better than your God? Gosh. I just, I mean, it's not going to, like, I'm not sure where we're headed, like where we're going. Well, we're going to the end eventually. I'm just trying to have that what... conversation in the middle part. So again. I have you... been raped. I have been that raped. That sucks. So I'm I can have, that I have you. a personal connection to what you're saying. So it's not that I'm just saying things. Yeah, no, I, I don't think anything good comes from a experience. child being raped. I don't think anything good can come from you being raped. I don't think that's, that's how the world works. I don't think that I agree. Jesus makes good... I agree. It was a bad thing, but I can look back and absolutely, again, it was so instructive for me. It was mm. so instructive for me. I'm, I'm, and again, yeah. that's, that's my experience that you don't have. And so I understand that. And I respect that. I don't feel that you're respecting where I'm coming from. So I'm not sure I respect where, where you're go coming from, from here. 100% I, I respect I, where you're coming from. I just don't understand. And I think that's, that's where fine. We're at. That's totally fine. <laughs> you don't understand. I, I, again, I don't mean to offend. I don't mean any of this is insulting. I it's just very do. confusing I to do. me. I do think you mean to offend. Doesn't make but any sense. Okay. Well, that's weird. That's fine. You do. You I mean don't. to be offensive. You mean to be offensive. Which part it's was okay. meant to be offensive, Wendy? You're you're being offensive. Which part? You Wendy? are being offensive. Right now? And Wendy, I I'm asking questions. You're you're accusing me of something, and I wanted to know when. Oh, you're you've accused me of quite a lot. <laughs> you've accused me of quite a lot of stuff. I'm not sure what I accused you of. I'm but... just not sure where we're gonna go. All right. On this, but I appreciate the conversation. I wish I appreciate you well. the time as well and I the conversation. I will pray that God reveals Himself in a new way to you, so that you can see and experience what Still I feel. Waiting. Because. Yep. If your if your heart is not open to it, there's no way. There's that's not no true. Way. That's not true. Saul's heart okay. was not open to Yahweh, and Jesus okay. revealed Himself to him. Did He not? I'll give you that. I will give you that. Absolutely. So therefore, why? Sure, I recant why is he that. Waiting? Yeah, I'll go. All right. Well, I can't pray that I why. have a Saul moment or something. I will. I absolutely okay. will. I know. Let's that see if that works. Like I've got so a lot of people patronizing for you, but that's okay. Well. I, Doc, I appreciate yeah. being on the receiving end of all I this. Appreciate, so <laughs> I appreciate the time today. Did you want to leave where we can find your stuff? Uh, I'm at gainingmyperspective.com. That's where you can find me. And I would love to, anyone who has questions or wants to continue this conversation, happy to uh, yeah. be emailed. You're welcome to email me. Awesome. Well, stay in touch. Thank you so much. Stay safe out there. Talk to you soon. Have a good one. Bye. And that's all the show there is for you today. Thanks for listening. If you like what you heard and want to help keep the recording light on, simply go to patreon.com forward slash BSW the podcast and sign up to be a supporter of the show. Your episodic tithes of a dollar or more will give you access to the patron feed, unaired conversations, early access to each episode, and much more. For the latest events, BSW swag, and a peek behind the scenes, head on over to the show's ever-evolving webpage at thebiblesayswhat.com. The Bible Says What the book is out. Head on over to thebiblesayswhat.com and get yourself and your grandma a signed copy. 
Thanks to the cosmic powers of the internet, it is now possible to buy me a beer or coffee online. Simply go to buymeacoffee.com forward slash BSW the podcast and click the appropriate buttons. If you can't support the show monetarily, please like, share, and or leave a review. As always, you can find me at the Bible Says What Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, or Instagram pages. You can also reach me at bswthepodcast at gmail.com. And no matter which platform you use to listen to your podcasts, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you won't miss out on the next episode. Until then, would you kindly pick up your Bibles and read them? I have nothing. I've got nothing. The end of the show. Goodbye. See you later. Don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. Goodbye now. Goodbye.